The origin of the term Monday Thursday is an old English corruption of the Latin mandatum novum, the new command, refers to the new command that Jesus gave to his disciples in the upper room. We're going to read it now in the Gospel of John. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and be. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the Word of God for the people of God. Praise Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, and all desires know, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, that we may more perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, that we might be called your disciples, and that we might heed this new command. And as I expound upon it, I pray that you would speak to me, through me, in me, and in spite of me, all for your great glory, in Christ our Lord. Amen. Do they know I am a disciple. Do they know I am a follower of Jesus? As Josh McDowell put forward in his book, The Case for Christ, if you were asked to come to trial, would there be enough evidence to convict you in the court of law through your life of being a Christian? More importantly, of being one who follows Jesus. For the disciples in the upper room, they were certainly not enough evidence up to a point. Yes, they had followed Jesus for three years. They had even tried to heal in Jesus' name. With some success, but also some failures. And yet, if you look at their behavior on the night in which he was betrayed into the hands of sinners, you could reasonably say, no, they are not followers of Jesus. They were followers of their own ambition. They were followers of a new kingdom in a new way, ruled with a new king on earth. But they were not followers of Jesus, the way that we know him, the way he revealed himself in the upper room where he washed their feet. And yet something changed for them. After the resurrection, they were no longer just called disciples. They were called apostles. They were called sent ones. And in their life, there was also death. All of them, with the exception of the beloved disciple, John, died a gruesome death, a martyr's death. And they died for what they had been. A risen Christ, a God who had conquered the grave, a God who had forgiven them even when they scattered and ran away from him in the upper, upper room. Think about it. Peter, who had said, Not I, Lord, I will stand with you until the very end. And then what does Peter do by the fireside? Denies him three times before the cock crows. And isn't it interesting that after his resurrection, when the disciples were in Galilee, they could see Jesus by the lakeside, exactly as they had, he had first called them, and he was cooking fish. And they must have remembered in their mind the call that went out, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. And so they came to that breakfast with Jesus. And Jesus talked to Peter, and he said, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. How many times did Peter say this? Three times. That's right. 
a sign of God's forgiveness, of His redemptive love, of taking sinners and molding them into saints, of taking doubters and betrayers and making them faithful martyrs. Few people would die for a lie. Think about it. So let me tell you a little bit about what happened to those 12 disciples. Peter was martyred under persecution for Emperor Nero. He was crucified upside down, and he did it at his request. Since he did not feel that he was worthy to die in the same manner as his Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Andrew went to the land of the cannibals in what is now modern day Eastern Europe. Christians there claimed him as the first to bring the gospel to their land. He also preached in modern day Turkey in what was then called Asia Minor and in Greece, where it is said that he was crucified there in Greece. Thomas went as far as India, and he even started an ancient community who looks to him as their, found, as their founder of their Christian community. They claim there in India that he was died when he was pierced through with spears of four soldiers. All at once. The disciple Philip had a powerful ministry in North Africa. He converted the wife of a powerful Roman consul. But in retaliation, that proconsul had Philip arrested and cruelly put to death. Matthew, also called Levi, the tax collector and writer of the gospel, he ministered Persia and Ethiopia. Some of the reports say he was not martyred. However, most of them say that he was stabbed to death in Ethiopia. Bartholomew had a widespread travel, and he was an active missionary. Some said he even went with Thomas all the way to India. Some say he even made his way to Armenia, to Ethiopia, and southern Arabia. Some say that he had his death by being flayed alive. Awful. James, who is the son of Alphaeus, is the least of the three James who is referred to in the New Testament. But he is reckoned to have ministered in Syria. The Jewish historian Josephus reported that he was stoned and then clubbed to death. Simon the Delon. So the story goes, ministered in Persia, and was, was killed after refusing to sacrifice to the sun god in Persia. Matthias was the apostle chosen to replace Judas. Tradition sends him to Syria with Andrew, and he meets his death there by being burned alive. The beloved disciple is the only one who is thought to have died a natural death in his old age. And yet, he was died exiled and far away from anything that he had ever known as home in his middle 90s. It was there that he was credited with writing the New Testament book of Revelation. So think about all of these disciples. They gave up so much. And why did they give up so much? For their faith. Because they believed in the Lord who could conquer death. And they were willing to give their own life that they might have life abundant. Because as Jesus promised them in that upper room that night, in John 14, he said, In my Father's house, there are many rooms. I go there to prepare a place for you. Because I live you also shall live. Brothers and sisters, this is the promise for us from our Lord Jesus Christ. But we have work to do to share this good news with others. And it is news worth sharing. And it is news worth giving our life and our ministries for. 
Because all of us as Christians, by virtue of our baptism, as minister, our ministers. If we have love in our heart for one another and for the world, we would never want to be ashamed to share our faith, no matter the cost. May it be so for you, and may it be so for me. Let's pray. Lord, you redeemed the world through your very life. And you have brought us to this place, O oh Lord, where we know that the gospel has been shared with millions and billions around the world. And yet, O oh Lord, all of it is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ who gave his own flesh and blood that we might live. And then on top of that is laying brick by brick the blood and the life of the martyrs. Oh Lord, may we never forget the costliness of this precious gift of redemption and love. They followed your example. May we follow theirs and may we, we follow yours even if it means taking us to the foot of the cross. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.